Hello, this is Donna Brighton. During the Leader Impact session last week, I shared my professional story. In today's session, I'd like to share some fun facts about me. I am a huge fan of office supplies, especially fantastic pens and great paper. I love hiking, especially in Sedona, Arizona, and I worked on conquering my fear of heights by jumping out of an airplane for my 30th birthday. I'm not sure that worked, but I am living on the 49th floor of a Chicago high rise overlooking Lake Michigan. Welcome to the second session of moving from now to next. Last session, I shared the five facets of forward action. They included focus, action, intention, time, and hope. These five facets can help you move forward and help you conquer the fear of the unknown. However, there is a context or environment that you're operating in. You can practice the five facets well, but I wanted to make sure that as you apply them, you understand some key components of change so that you can go beyond surviving this change. You actually thrive through change. I have helped many organizations and their people successfully transition through change. I'm also a founding member, longtime board member, and past president of the Global Association of Change Management Professionals. From my background in organizational change and extensive research in the area of brain science, I'm going to share a few concepts and then three steps to success as you thrive through change. The first concept to thriving is to understand a bit about change. We're going to talk about exactly what change is and is not, how we naturally respond to change, and a real roadblock that can keep you stuck instead of moving forward from now to next and thriving from when you're dealing with change. As we explore this topic, think for a minute about the pace of change. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? And how does that impact you and your world? Now, I just ask, like to ask a question here. What is change? I, I mean, you know, how do you actually define it? I like to say it's sort of like the wind. You know it when you see it. The impact of the wind, that is. But what exactly is the wind? Well, we've got a definition here. And there's a couple key things you need to understand. Change is the external situation. Transition is the internal process. Change is what happens to you. Transition is how you respond. What is important to understand is that change impacts each person differently because we're all unique human beings. The internal transition process has three stages. We have to let something go, like the way things were or the status quo. Then we move into the messy middle, as Brene Brown likes to say. And then we make a transition or move to the new beginning. The dip that you see in this change curve represents the loss of performance or productivity. Let's use a practical example. Think about the last time you moved where you lived to where you are now. As you packed your belongings, moving them, unpacking them, you went from an ending or leaving where you used to live to a new beginning where you live now. But just because you moved and the change happened didn't mean the transition process was fully complete. You still had to figure out where the light switches were located how to find your way to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and where to go to get groceries or pick up your mail. That transition process takes time, and we all deal with it differently. And here's another really important point. We're all dealing with more than one change, which leads us to the reality of this roadblock. 
Now you can see here a picture of a sponge. Imagine with me for a minute that inside each one of us exists a sponge that represents the amount of change that we can absorb, the capacity that we have to accept, understand, transition through those changes and the impact of the change. Well, as I just said, we're dealing with more than one change at a time. And unfortunately, the reality is there are times where we have more change to deal with than we have capacity to handle it. And when that occurs, our sponge gets full and it can't absorb anymore. Saturation is a real deal. And I'd like to share a story about a leader that I worked with who lived in New York City. I was explaining this concept of the sponge and he looked at me with such relief on his face. He said, thank you for sharing that. You know, just last weekend, I had packed up to go visit my daughter in Washington, D.C. I walked out my front door, got on the train, showed up at my daughter's, and realized that my suitcase was still sitting in my apartment in New York City. He said, I thought I was, you know, suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia or something. I just thought there was something wrong with me. And what you've helped me understand is I'm really suffering from change saturation. Because when perfectly wonderful human beings are saturated with change, they can move into dysfunction, and things that were easy and simple to do in the past get overwhelming. So saturation is a real roadblock during times of change. So just a quick review about these concepts around change is that change does happen, but it's and that's external, but internally transition is the process that we all have to go through to make peace with that change. Now, while we all are impacted by change, we all transition differently. And how long that process takes and what we need to go through varies from one individual to another. And then finally, I'd like to share about the FUD factor. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt make up the FUD factor. And the more of that that's present in our lives, the more overwhelm and potential saturation we can experience. So now that you have a better appreciation for change, transition, and change saturation, there's a few key things to understand about the brain. The organizing principle of the brain is that the brain's priority is survival. It's constantly scanning the environment for threats. Threats to the brain can be things like uncertainty, a loss of autonomy, and many other factors that occur during times of change. When the brain gets triggered, it moves into a state of distrust. When we're in a state of distrust, the world feels threatening. Threats make us retreat, and we feel the need to protect ourselves. This is not a mental place where we perform our best, thrive, or take forward action. Neuroscientists say that the threats can trigger an amygdala hijack. And we experience during this amygdala hijack higher levels of cortisol and adrenaline. The fear networks in our brains cause us to wither. We fight, flee, freeze, or appear, appease others. When we're in this place of brain threat, it is impossible to thrive, to see possibilities in the midst of pain. It's essential as a leader to recognize when you or your team members are being triggered and then call it out. When you name it, you tame it. There's something about identifying what's going on that will help you regain control of your neural cycles. What I want for you is not just to survive change, but to thrive in the midst of it. That means you will grow through this, not just go through it. There are three steps to success as you thrive in the midst of change. The first step to thrive is focus or potentially refocus. You see, 
Fear limits your focus. It paralyzes your potential. It obliterates optimism and it sabotages success. Your brain filters everything through the lens of fear or goals. So in order to thrive, you need to focus to regain control of your brain. Now, what you say to yourself really matters because how you're talking about the change that's impacting you tells your brain how to respond. If you're focused on a goal and the change creates a barrier, you have the power to manage that barrier with the words that you choose because what you say creates the world that you live in. For example, there was a CEO that I coach who shared that he needed to have a difficult conversation with someone on his board of directors. I asked him, like, what did he feel in his body as he thought about having that difficult conversation? And he explained with words like tense, uncomfortable, and dread. I explained how the words he used created the context for the conversation he was about to have. And I suggested that he choose some different words. As we processed the possibilities, he decided that instead of having a difficult conversation, he needed to have an alignment conversation. Wow, what a state change in how he felt and how he approached that conversation. And there was a happy ending to the story because he used a different choice of words as he was explaining to the person he was talking with what they needed to, to address, neither one of them felt threatened and the results were positive instead of the alternative. The bottom line is that your words matter. So this is a helpful reminder to all of us as we consider what we're thinking about now and how it relates to the future that we create for ourselves. Because as it says here, you need to watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your habits. They become character and watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Do you see the difference between these two stacks of stones? We look at this one, it's a little off balance. And then there's this one that seems to be in perfect alignment. This is a metaphor for the importance of refreshment in all dimensions of life. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to participate in a program called The Corporate Athlete, based on the book, The Power of Full Engagement. It was a transformational program as we learned about the integrated approach to life. It's kind of ironic because my master's thesis was on the topic of holistic leadership, which is about bringing your whole self to your leadership. This is about holistic living and recognizing all the pieces and parts that are essential in the process of getting refreshed. We were created to have life rhythms, not live in a linear fashion, moving from one task to the next to the next. The point of this step in thriving through change is that you must make time to be refreshed physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. If you're worn out as a leader, you cannot be your best. So a quick review of the three steps to success in thriving through change. First, you need to focus on what really matters. Will you be driven by purpose or circumstances? Remember, your brain's filtering everything through fear or goals. Where will you put your attention? The next step in thriving through change is to reframe from why me to what can I contribute to the world? As we talked about the brain, I'd like to remind you that when it's in the state of threat, your natural response is the why me. When you shift from pain to possibility, what happens is that you reframe the situation. Finally, 
Consider how you can build times of refreshment into your schedule. There is scientific evidence behind the benefit of taking a regular Sabbath. When we're busy, it's easy to stay focused on doing. Unfortunately, we forget that we are not human doings, we are human beings. So pause and consider how you can refresh at all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. As you apply the five facets of forward action and move into the future, remember the impact of change on your brain and the reality of the FUD factor. Be intentional about how you thrive through change by refocusing on what matters most, reframing situations to see the possibility, and taking time to refresh your body, mind, heart, and spirit. If you don't take care of yourself, who will? There's a saying that applies here. If it's going to be, it's up to me. While you may be impacted by many changes, you get to choose the response. My hope for you is that you will apply what I've shared and not just survive, but thrive through change. I look forward to our next session together when we talk about your leadership voice. Until then, take a look at how leader impact can play a role in helping you thrive. And let me know if there's anything I can do to support you. In the meantime, make it an amazing day.